let's talk some more about materials with material parameter collections because we've talked about material parameters and we've even uh, talked a little bit about vertex painting already in the last video today let's talk about something else fun because these parameters are things that you can use to influence materials on a per instance basis which is really really cool but what if we have something that is almost the other way around where we have one value that is global throughout your entire project but separate materials can use that value in different ways that will be very interesting and that is what material parameter collections are so let's make one we can uh, in our material uh, sub selection here we can uh, create a material parameter collection and let's just call that um tutorial params and when we open that up we get a list of scalar parameters and vector parameters which is just singular values and triple values let's make one of both uh, call this one uh, just scalar that's fine and then we'll make a vector parameter as well which will just be a uh, color and we'll call that vector for now uh, just to keep things simple you can make as many of these as you want, of course. So we can add like a bunch of these, uh, but that's not necessarily what I want to do right now. And these can now be accessed from any material in your game or any blueprint in your game, technically speaking. But really, mostly they're meant to be used for material stuff, uh, not to store any non-material data. There's other ways to do that. That's not what we're talking about here today. Uh, let's make two materials use this data in different ways. So uh, we have this uh, material over here, which is our vertex color material that we made last time. And then we've also got our uh, flat color material that we made in a previous video. Let's add in a collection parameter. And there we can uh, choose out of all of our collection parameters of course we don't have that many right now uh we're using the tutorial params in this case and we have to choose what parameter we're going to be using so for this example uh let's use the scalar value and in this material that scalar value is going to uh drive the metallicness of this thing i i don't know uh, let's set the roughness here to zero so that we can really see uh, the metallic vibes that we have here. So if we disconnect this. So now if we go into our tutorial params and we go into our scalar, we can set the default value here to one and we will see, hey, this is now a very, very metallic value. Even though within the shader itself, we don't really have this value set at all. It's because the material parameter collection has this value stored in it which we're just reading now let's go into the vertex colors uh material here and for this i think what we're going to do is we're going to um let's scroll the textures based on the parameter instead so we can again say our collection param and we'll use the scalar as well and this will just be the speed of that scrolling so uh, we'll need a time node for that. We will need a textual coordinate node for that. We're going to break that. Uh, we're going to then add to that time divided by like 100 or something like that. So every second is going to uh, move 1% of the texture. Uh, and then we will multiply that by our scalar value so that we can say make that uh, go faster or slower depending now this is not a particularly great example of using them because uh this value we probably want to be able to set to like 5 6 7 12 15 127 uh something like that and what we're using for here is really only a value between 0 and 1 so again not a great example but you can do so much cool stuff with this uh, let's finish off this scrolling that we have here uh, we can append vector get the green channel uh, back there and then use that as the uvs for these two which will make them slowly scroll and now we can see that this thing is very slowly scrolling and these are very metallic but if i set this scalar parameter to zero these will stop being metallic and this will stop scrolling if i set this to five uh, this will still be metallic because it caps out at a metallic value 
of one, and this one will now be scrolling a lot faster. So they're both reading the value in our parameter collection, but doing different stuff with them in their individual shaders, which is really, really quite cool. Now we can also access this from a blueprint. So uh, instead of doing it in a material, we can uh, deal with this in a blueprint. And then here we can get the scalar parameter value and we can get the vector parameter value, which will work much the same way. We pass in the collection that we want to get out of. Then we get a drop down menu from all of our scalar parameters that we can choose and the same thing here with the factor parameters so that way you can also use the variables that your material is using uh, in a blueprint if you needed to i didn't point it out in the video about the parameters uh, because i didn't think it was that relevant uh, you can also just get the information from a normal material uh, their parameters but the same way we can set the parameter values in here we can also set the parameter values for a collection. So uh, let's do something a little bit fun, shall we? Uh, we can play a timeline. And this timeline we will, uh, at the midpoint, set to a value of 1. And then at the end, we'll set it back to a value of 0. So it's going to be bouncing back and forth between the values. And we can set scalar parameter value which gets us a collection our tutorial params our scalar value and that we will be setting through this timeline so now if we connect this up to update and we play the game we will see that these things will go from being metallic to being non-metallic and this thing will if we uh, get a better vantage point is going back and forth in its scrolling which is very very interesting it seems to be uh scrolling back and forth so it seems like value is actually getting set to a negative at some point no one's really sure where that's happening but that's not really uh relevant for what is happening here right now today so there we go material parameter collections allow you to use these parameters in different ways for different shaders which is very very powerful because if you have a system like a rain system in your game right some materials might react to rain by becoming wet having their roughness go down and some materials might react to rain differently like if you already have a water material you might want to add like little droplets uh, that hit it instead or some materials like if you have dirt it might not necessarily become more shiny but it might become a little bit darker because it absorbs the water all that kind of stuff has to do with rain and can be driven with just the one simple value. And for the full course, if you're watching this in the future, it should be all up on the YouTube channel already. But if you're watching this shortly after it was uploaded, there will be a link down below in the description to the Patreon where you can find the full course. And a very big thank you to all of my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page. And a special thanks to my Cave Digger tier Patreons, Sergey Thomas, 